Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We worship you, Christ the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. Anybody glad to be in the service one more time? Hallelujah. I tell you, something about walking through those doors, isn't it? It's something about waking up in the morning and feeling like, wow, I'm on my way to the house of the Lord. It's just, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It comes over me. It comes over me. It just comes over me. I just, and then when I walk in the door and then, then when I see the saints of God, it's just like, God, what you going to do today? Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Who, who are you going to help today? Who are you going to encourage today? God. Oh, my goodness. When we come together to worship Christ the Lord. Glory to his name. I tell you, my God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. And I'm so glad to be in the service one more time. Glory to God. So glad to see all of you on today. And so glad to see that you are all with us online today. And just a good thing to have our, the brothers and sisters come together just to worship together i can be at home i can worship at home i do that you know i do that I, and, and with, you know, this is just what i do right praise is what i do <laughs> you know but when it when you come together with the, well, with the saints it's just something something special yeah. so i'm glad to see you in the house today i need you you need me amen we're all apart of God's family. <laughs> oh, amen. Amen. And so we're, we're excited. Let's come on and, and get ready to get started with the service. And we're going to ask that you stand if you can. And we're going to <clears throat> begin our service with our 2024 church scripture. And then we're going to move right into our mission and our vision statement. And then our call to worship. Amen. 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 Uh, our 2024 church scripture reads work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people Colossians 3 23 our mission to be a witness locally and to the world for Christ according to God's holy word John 12 32 our vision through the preaching and teaching and living of God's word with souls to Christ and make disciples Matthew 28 and our call to worship. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. In your hymnals, you'll find on page 274 the solid rock. We're going to ask that you lift that up with us. We're talking about Christ, the solid rock. Hallelujah. Is your hope built on anything? Bless, hallelujah, than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. My hope, nothing than Jesus. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy lean on Jesus, on Christ. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking. When darkness veils its lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ, rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand, all of the ground is sinking sand, his oath, his covenant, his blood, support me in the whelming flood, when all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ's solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the 
ground. Is when he shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock. Hallelujah. All of the ground is in the sand. All of the ground is. Wait a minute. When, when he shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found. Hallelujah. Faultless to stand on Christ. All of the ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah. All of the ground. One more time. When he shall come with trumpet sound. Anybody believe it? He coming. No may I then in him be found dressed. In his righteousness, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ, there I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Amen. Oh, he's coming back. Yeah. He is coming. Oh, my God. With trumpet sound. Glory to his name. And I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I want to be found in him. Oh, dressed in his righteousness alone. Glory to his name. Faultless to stand before the throne. Come on, Reverend uh, Tony Woodland. We're going to ask you to please... Lift us up with a prayer of invocation this morning. And then following that, Sister Norma Carpenter is going to come. She's going to give us our uh, announcements. And then pastor's coming with pa pastoral meetings and remarks. Amen. Praise God. When he shall come, hallelujah. He will be back. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being the solid rock. Thank you, Lord, for picking us out of the sand, Father God, and putting us on top of you, Lord. And as we stand on your righteousness, Father God, as we stand on your blood that holds us up, that cleanses us, Father God, that we want to be found in you when you come back, Lord. We want to know that we're going with you, Father God. We want to know that we stand upon the solid rock. Everything else is sinking sand. Father God, we don't want to sink. So we want your presence right now, Father God. We want you to show your presence, Father God, and show us, Father God, that you are the solid rock, Father God. Show us, God, that you can lift us up, Father God. Show us, God, that you love us and care for us and keep us, Father God. Father God, for you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die upon the cross for us. And Father God, as he rose from the dead, Father God, we stand upon that, Father God. We stand upon the resurrection. We stand upon the blood, Father God, that saved us. So we ask, Lord, that you will continue to watch over us. We pray, Father, Father God, for your presence. We pray for your presence even over the, the, the internet lines, Father God. We pray, Father God, that even though your people are not physically here, they would feel your presence. Father God, we want to just reach out, Father God, and, and have you grab on us, Father God, and let us know that you love us because you sent your son. So, Lord, we love you. Yes. We praise you. Yes. And we glorify you, Father God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's praise his holy and righteous name. For it's in the name of Jesus the Christ that we do pray. Amen. Amen. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, oh Lord. Hear our
Good morning. Good morning. Our April 2024 church calendar. Today, 11 a.m., Holy Communion Sunday worship service in person and online. Pastor Carpenter preaching. 1.30 p.m., Kirkbride Ministry. Reverend Shada McBreen will be preaching. Amen. Wednesday, April 17th, 6.30 p.m., Bible study on YouTube, Facebook Live, PPP, and WCC or Conference Line. Thursday, April 18th, 7 p.m., join the Thrive Bible study. Send email request to d underscore johnson at ymail.com. Sunday, April 21st, 11 a.m., Sunday, worship service in person and online. And 1.30 p.m., Kirkbride Ministry, Reverend Dr. Robin E. Woods will be preaching. Amen. Our thought for the week, dear Jesus, please help me to follow your example and take the next step to demonstrate genuine love in my actions today. First John 3, 16 through 18 from our daily bread. Thank you. Let the people of God say amen. amen. What a mighty, mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Uh, I will report I have a little case of the sniffles, which means it takes me longer to preach my message. So give me an extra hour. Ain't nobody say amen yet. <laughs> co said some people just hit the button online. They left. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us, Jesus. But well, we praise and thank God for all of you and thank God for his presence in this place. We serve a mighty, 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 good and awesome God who is in, so worthy of all the praise. Thank God for Holy Communion Sunday where we come and we just commune with God. Amen. Amen. And you know you can take care of that right now. Nothing between your soul and your Savior. Amen. You can get saved right now. So you can commune. There'd be nothing between your soul and your Savior, you say, Lord, I thank you for sending Jesus to save my soul. Amen. I rededicate my life to you. Oh, hallelujah. And in that moment, in that instance, it's going to be all right. The thief on the cross, what did he say? What did he say? He said, today, right now. Can you remember me later? No, right now. Oh, I think we serve a right now God. Amen. Hallelujah. He will take care of business with you right now. Amen. But God is good, and we're glad to have all of you here with us and online. We're going to move into our holy communion service. If you turn the back of your hymnals to number 598, the Lord's Supper, we'll begin playing our music, Calvary. Amen. Our officers will prepare to get the table ready. Amen. All right. Yeah. <laughs> 
Amen. Amen. Let us stand for our responsive reading. Amen. The Lord's Supper found in, in your hymnals, number 598. And as taken out of 1 Corinthians 11, uh, chapter 11, verses 23 to 34. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. For let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. But this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened, should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask Reverend Dr. Rob if she would come with our prayer of forgiveness. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for Holy Communion, God. And we thank you, God, that even though our righteousness is as filthy rags, God, you don't condemn us, God, but you're constantly forgiving us, God. And everything that um, we do, God, has already been nailed to the cross. So we thank you, God, for the forgiveness of our sins. And we ask you to keep us in your holy care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord God, we just honor you and praise you and thank you. For Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took that bread, he broke it and said, this represents my broken body for you. This cup represents my shed blood for you. So God, we pray your blessings upon the bread, your blessings upon the cup, that when we partake of it, oh God, that we will realize who Jesus is, why he came, what he has done and that he is soon to return bless us right now god as we partake of holy communion in jesus name amen praise god once you've been served away we'll all take the communion together amen
same night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and broke it and said, this, body, this bread represents my body, which shall be broken for you. Take it all of it in remembrance of Christ. After the same manner, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup represents my shed blood. For without shedding the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, there is no remission of our sins. Drink all of it in remembrance of Christ. Amen, Lord God, we honor you, we praise you, we thank you for this time of Holy Communion. The word says, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. You do show the Lord's death till he comes. He's on his way back, y'all. Hallelujah. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. What did the angel say? Why well, look for the living amongst the dead? I know you witnessed them putting him in the grave, but in three days, something happened. Hallelujah. Amen. He said he would be in Galilee. Try Galilee first. Amen. Try to find him in Galilee first. Amen. Praise God. We want to welcome to our service online Mike McNeil, Elizabeth King, Calvin Green, Brenda and Steve Williams, Brenda Carpenter, Tony Dixon, Rochelle Enti, Pat Green, Edna Jennings, and Alberta McDaniel. We're going to ask Minister Doug Jr. if he would come and pray for the preacher and the word. Then we have Ministry of Music recorded, and then I'll come back. Amen. Well, thus, what thus saith the Lord. Amen. 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 Hold on a moment. <laughs> Minister Doug Jr. said it was so good what we did last Sunday greeting everybody. Yeah. And since there's some different people here this Sunday, he wanted to know if he could do it again. I'll put the church to a vote. No, go ahead, let's go over there. Okay. Everybody get up. Brother Dennis is gonna play some music and Doug Jr. is gonna pray and then we'll go with the service. Amen. Praise God. And if you can't get up, just raise your hand and say, look, I can't get up. Come to me, please. Amen. I don't think I'm all that special, but please come to me. Amen. Praise God. Amen. God bless you. Amen, Mom. We coming to you, Mother. Amen.
That's your cue. <laughs> Music no. Musical chairs. <laughs> See, that was a good time, right? Yeah. Hey, hey. Feel like old time. up here whispering. I was like, they probably think we talk about something serious. We up here joking around. <laughs> See people whispering that was going on. <laughs> Nothing. All right. Go ahead and pray. Uh Lord, I just I just thank you so much for this opportunity to um just be in your presence for us to be uh gathered um together in your name, God. Right now we come asking you to um to bless the word to bless pastor as he brings the word God to allow the Holy Spirit to, you know, literally speak through him and allow the Holy Spirit to translate it for each and every one of us so that we can hear the way we need to hear it from the oldest all the way down to the youngest child, God. 
We thank you that you've covered us. We thank you that you've covered this sanctuary, God. And every other body of Christ is gathering today, Lord. Let there be no distractions, God. Let there be no evil spirits that will try to come and, and, and snatch this word away, God. Allow it to, to, to grow in all of us and allow us to be able to, to carry it with us as we go on our way, God. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you. Oh! 
Let the people of God say amen. amen. Today we'll be in the book of Hebrews, chapter 4. Uh, we'll read right now verses 14 through 16. That's the focus of today's message. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16, King James Version. If you can stand, please stand just in reverence to God's word. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. But was at all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for this time of worship. Have your way in our lives, O oh God, and send your word. And let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are our strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Today we want to talk about spiritual rest. Spiritual rest. We need to learn how to rest spiritually. If there is a natural rest, then there ought to be a spiritual rest. Uh, if you take a lunch break, <laughs> if you go to recess, if you uh, take a smoke break, if you go on vacation, if you take a breather for the natural body, then there ought to be something for the spiritual body. You, you ought to have a spiritual rest. And be mindful that when you rest spiritually, you just don't stop everything. Oh, Lord. When, when you take a break from something, something is still going on. Ah, or... or Something is still moving and operating, but you removed yourself from that situation for a moment, maybe to, to gather yourself or to refresh yourself or to rejuvenate yourself. Hebrews 4 talks about a rest. And a lot of times people get just confused with the eternal rest. And if it was eternal rest, we wouldn't need to come boldly to the throne of grace. Oh, Lord, have mercy. He's talking about a spiritual rest that we need to take right now. Amen. We, we need to stop killing ourselves, trying to do everything for God right now. Our God has said in his word that, that, that there's a thing called a Sabbath rest. What he's saying that on the seventh day, he, in fact, rested. Now, who's more important than God? Uh, never get yourself to the point where you think everybody needs you. Oh, Lord, have mercy. That you can't take a break. Ah, a lot of times you talk to folks psychologically, it's for them and not for them. Oh, it's for themselves. There's this feeling of this thing that I need to feel needed and, and necessary and but you can destroy yourself and trying to meet something that is really unrealistic. And, 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 and we need to take time for ourselves. Now, I, I would challenge you that when you take spiritual rest, it doesn't mean that you don't go to church. Ah, it doesn't mean that you don't worship. It doesn't mean that you don't do what God has called you doesn't mean that you put the anointing on the side because spiritual rest 
is in fact your rest in Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Hebrews 4 talks about that. It, it, it says God's promise of entering his rest still stands. So we ought to tremble with fear that some of you might fail to experience it. They, this, this letter was Hebrews written to some, some Hebrew Christians who were struggling with the faith. They said, there's no way God could be in this with what I'm going through. Anybody ever been there? There's no way that God could be in this with what I'm going through, with what I'm feeling, with what I'm witnessing. People right now say, where is God? The world going crazy. But if you read the word, God predicted that the world would in fact go crazy. Oh, Lord, have mercy. So how, how can you walk around shocked when you've been informed? Ah, but it says, uh, for this good news that God has prepared this rest, has been announced to just to us as just it was to them. Talk about the Israelites now. He said, but it did them no good because they didn't mix it with faith. See, when you get the gospel, you have to combine it with faith. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you don't combine it with faith, then you'll be like the Israelites that says it did them no good because they didn't combine it with faith like those that listen to God. For only we who believe can enter his rest. Lord, have mercy. Only we who believe can enter his rest, this spiritual rest. And he said, you know what? Because they didn't believe, they, they won't enter my place of rest. Oh, my God, my God. And he said this, I prepared this since the beginning of the world that you might be able to take a Sabbath rest. One translation calls it a special rest. You ought to be able to rest in Christ. Mm. Because there's a lot of stuff that you go through being a Christian. But Hebrew said that God expects you to take a rest. To enter into rest. And when you enter into this rest, you go in to be refreshed, to be rejuvenated, to be restored. And guess what? The world will not fall apart because you took a spiritual rest. Oh, anybody, that's so important. That the, the, the company can't rub it out you. Use your vacation time, please. That company can run without and ran before you came and it run when you go. And they not pay you like you like you are that important to take, take a rest. That's a natural rest. Spiritual rest, God said, is that. When you accept Christ. Salvation, you enter into this rest, which means that stop using your own energy, your own power to do God's work. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Some of us are tired because we have not properly used the power that God grants us to do ministry and to do his work and to deal with issues and to deal with family stuff and everything, to deal with a relational problems, to deal with sickness and health and everything. See, God has given us the ability to deal with these things. But when we become overwhelmed, what do we do? Oh, there's a thing called spiritual rest, spiritual rest. Just like there's natural rest, there's spiritual rest. The word rest means to cease work or movement in order to relax, refresh oneself, and recover strength. An instance or period of relaxing or ceasing to engage in strenuous or stressful activity. And don't let people impose upon you their guidelines, and, I mean, their deadline. You ever had that? Somebody call you for something, you got to have it to me by 2 p.m. Whoa, 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 whoa. First of all, you need something from me, and I'm nice enough to give it to you, and then you're going to mandate when it's got to be there. Lord have mercy. Ah. Anybody ever make that emergency yours? You ever have to tell somebody no, and they figured it out? Woo! <laughs> That's a good one. I can't do that for you. And they figured it out. The next time you saw them, they doing fine. As a matter of fact, they never call you and tell you they figured it out. Anybody know your family? I mean, anybody like that? 
Oh, sorry about that. You know, they done figured this thing out. You ain't heard nothing from them. That's why you ain't heard from them. Somebody said, the pastor's meddling. So what is spiritual rest? Spiritual rest is a state of resting in the power of God and acknowledging that power and feeling God's presence. That's what spiritual rest is. Even though you're going through something, that's, that, that's why people say uh, um, a peace that passes all understanding and a joy that is unspeakable. Folk trying to figure out how you still standing and you're trying to let them know that you're resting in the power of God and you're acknowledging the power and feeling God's presence in your life, which is why you are not overwhelmed, which is why you're not going crazy, which is why you still come to church, which is why you still worship, which is why you still believe God. It's a thing called spiritual rest, y'all. Mm. It's profound nourishment of the soul, a deep and tranquil state of being that allows us to connect with our higher purpose and find uh, inner peace. Lord, have mercy. What, what is a spiritual rest? The capacity to experience God in all things and to recline in the knowledge of the holy. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know what a recliner is? The capacity to experience God in all things and to recline in the knowledge of the holy. That's what you call spiritual rest. Yeah, there's a whole lot going on. Yeah, my family jacked up. I'm jacked up. My cousins are jacked up. My boss is jacked up. My job is jacked up. But I'm reclining in the knowledge. Come on. Life happens. Stuff will happen. But you have to learn how to be in the presence of God. That's what spiritual rest is. Even though everything around me seems like it's going crazy, I'm resting. I'm spiritually resting. Yes, I know what's going on. I'm not trying to deny it. I'm not trying to ignore it. But if God say he's going to handle it, I don't think he need my hands on it. That's why you got to mix it with faith. He said the Israelites missed out. See, their rest wasn't just in the promised land. They would have gotten rest if they'd done what they're supposed to do. But he's talking about resting in the by faith in him who promised you. Because if you don't have faith in the promise, you're not going to look for the promise to be fulfilled. Therefore, you don't rest in him. Then you go ahead and do like Israelites. That's what it says in Hebrews 4 in the other verses. They did their own thing. And he said, because they did, uh, because of unbelief and disobedience, they shall not enter into my rest. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Spiritual rest. Spiritual rest, the ability to remain connected to Christ as we live and work with, for, and through him. What does it say? In him we move, live, and have our being. That's why some folk in your family, people can't understand you. How you go through stuff, are you still talking about, I pray the Lord. You're still going through stuff. God is good. They said, what is wrong with this fool? If it had not been for the, if the Lord was on your side, why you got surgery? Come, come on. Because you're locked in this spiritual rest. You're resting in the promise. You're resting. Your faith is resting in God and what he said and what he promised. And you believe God for it. And if he doesn't do it now, he can still do it later. That's what I like about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they told Nebuchadnezzar, look at here, look at here. I cannot bow down to the image. But whatever you want to do, you got to do because if God does not deliver us, if he doesn't or if he does, guess what? It doesn't change his name. He's still God. Oh, I wish I had a witness in here. Have you ever prayed for something and God still didn't give it to you yet, but he's still your God? Because you know why I said Because there's some folks who hadn't done what they wanted and they left God. Yeah. Yes. Oh, he ain't real. He's not real because of what he didn't give you. Look, read Genesis again, please. Spiritual rest is an act of resistance to empires and kingdoms of this world and within our own lives. Wow. Wow. True rest is experienced when one spends time in God's presence, praying and reflecting on his word. And that doesn't mean you take 24 hours a day, you know, because some, you know, you got to go through all that. 15 Bibles in the living room. 
20 in the dining room. Oh, I had my chandelier chains all crosses. I don't think you need all that to get in God's presence. Jesus, remember me when you get in paradise today. But why does God command us to rest? This is so that his children can set aside time to pray, study, and worship him and enjoy uh, and rediscover his covenantal love and faithfulness towards them. Sometimes you have to take time to take inventory on how good God's been. Sometimes you can go through a rough time in your life and you, it makes you forget about how good he's been down through the years. And see, when you look back over your life and you begin to think things over. Sometimes you have to do that. You have to rehearse it in your mind how good God been, how he kept you from danger, seed and unseen, how he made a way out of nowhere, how they wanted to fire you and you still there. And those that wanted to fire you, they got fired. Spiritual rest. That's what co pastor talking about. Said. Something about Sunday morning. Something about no matter what's going on, I still got to go worship him. Got to press my way. Some folk press their way. That they did not feel like it, y'all. They could barely make it. But something about God. Something about who he is and what he's done. Some folk don't feel like they ain't come see me. They come to worship the Lord. That's why I can't talk about uh, uh, what's happening on the news and everything and about political stuff because they ain't what they come for. They can get that at home. We come, we come talk about Jesus, yeah. the author and finisher of our faith, the one we rest in, yeah. the one we can depend on no matter what. Uh, no matter what it looks like, God is still God. I, I come to let you know he's still God no matter what happens, no matter where it happens, no matter who it happens to. God is still God. And there's one verse in there that says, had Joshua uh, given them rest. And it actually it means, I mean, had Jesus, King James says Jesus, it means has Joshua. Because when you put it in context, had Joshua given them rest in the promised land. But it's all about the Hebrew and the Greek and the Joshua and Jesus. When you interpret them, they're the same name. Hey, Hoshua and J. Washua. And uh, talk to Dennis. And because uh, we studied it already, Hebrews. I got to go through all that. I'm trying to go somewhere with this message, y'all. Amen. Look on the website somewhere. www.dennis.com, I think it is. So if you look at Hebrews 4, 14 through 16, what does God's word say about the believer's spiritual rest? It only belongs to believers because you've got to believe in Jesus to be able to enter into this rest. See, you, you can come boldly to the throne of grace, but if he's not your high priest, if he's not your great high priest, would you just look? Oh, Lord. Point number one, you have a great high priest. That's why when it says, see and then, that's a, that's, a, that's a conclusion kind of remark. See and then that you have this great. So you have a great high priest. And guess where he hangs out at? Since he got up, uh, since he got up out the grave. He's on the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and for me. You have a great high priest if you're a believer. If you are a believer, you have a great high priest. Point number two, your great high priest knows and cares. Your great high priest knows and cares. Point number three, your great high priest is waiting to help you. Your great high priest is waiting to help you. Point number one, you have a great high priest. Point number two, your great high priest knows and cares. Point number three, your great high priest is waiting to help you. 24-7. Lord, have mercy. 24-7. You have a great high priest. Hebrews uh, 4.14 says, Seeing then, realizing that you have a great high priest, that is past, that is gone into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, 
Let us hold fast, my God, the, our profession. In other words, what it's saying to you and I, since we have a high priest who's entered into heaven, Jesus, the son of God, hold firmly to what you believe. No matter what you're going through down here, hold fast to your profession. Why? Because you have a great high priest in heaven interceding for you. See, down here, you know, people talk about advocacy. You have an advocate, and you need this, and you need that, and you have someone representing you, and an advocate. Well, who? Jesus is the great high priest advocate. Mm. Advocating for you and for me in heaven. Set the Holy Spirit to keep us so he could go back and sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede for you and for me as our great high priest. Hebrews 2.17 says this to you and I. Wherefore in all things it behooves him to be made like unto his brethren. Ain't that love? Jesus was made into me and was made into you. He, Jesus became me and became you. What a step down. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Wherefore in all things it behooves us to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be merciful and faithful, what? High priest and things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Oh, I got me a great high priest, Lord. And Hebrews 3, 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Oh, you got a great high High priest. You want something to brag about? You mess somebody up, you go out there today, talk about, I got a great high priest. Like, what are you talking about? You're my great high priest. What, what are you talking about? That's a good way to get somebody to save or witness to them. Just tell them, I got a great high priest. They'd be like, well, where are you getting from? What store? <laughs> got that great high priest. And see, to the Jews, the high priest was the highest religious authority in the land. The high priest alone entered the Holy of Holies once a year to make atonement for the sins of the whole nation. We learned that Jesus went in once and for all. Hallelujah. He had to go in every year. You know the story about the priest. They had to tie something on the bottom of the robe just in case the priest wasn't right. You know, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff hiding on the robes, you know. A lot of stuff going on the robes. Did you know that? So just in case he wasn't right, because you can't fool God. They had to yank him out of there. They said he went in at 12. My God, it's 4 p.m. I ain't heard. I ain't hear God. And I don't hear him. The high priest. Now, Jesus, like the high priest, mediates between God and us. He's our representative. He intercedes for us before God. Ah, he assures us of God's forgiveness, God's mercy, and God's grace. But Jesus has much more authority than the Jewish priest. Ah, my God. Because he is truly God and truly man. Unlike the high priest who could go before God only once a year, Christ is always at God's right hand interceding for us. He is always available when we pray. So you do have a great high priest. Point number two, your great high priest knows and cares. He knows what you're going through and he cares what you're going through. That's hard to believe sometimes because if he knows and cares, why am I still going through it? You ever, you ever cry about that? You ever have that complaint? It's, you can be honest. God, what are you doing? We forget the fact that he knows just how much we can bear. See, when you enter to the spiritual rest, you're entering to something like, thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. When you enter to the spiritual rest and the salvation of Christ, it's, it's, he's a very present help. In trouble. Oh, yea, though I walk through the valley. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. All my appointed time, I'm going to wait 
for my change. See, when you enter to the spiritual rest, this is what, these are the words. This is that word of God. This is faith by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That's that word of God keeps bouncing in your ear when you get ready to get all bent out of shape, when you get ready to lose hope, when you get ready to lose God, when you get ready to give up on God. That word of God, that word of God is alive because the word of God is Jesus in the flesh. Oh, and that's what, that, that's a word is alive. That word is so alive in you. That word is speaking to you. That's the word that makes you get the energy to get up when you don't feel like getting up. What makes you the, makes gives you the energy to look up when you when your head is bent down. See that, that spiritual rest. That when God's word is, is what happens when when the doctor gives you bad news, you still got some good news somewhere in you. Somewhere in you, you got the gospel of the good news in you. And that it does not have to be what they said, but it's always going to be what God said. I wish I had a witness today. It does not have to be what they said, but it's always going to be what God said. And I know God loved me. Oh! He makes a way out of no way. See, that's that spiritual rest. That's what you rest in. Anybody ever? See, when you get bad news, it hits your flesh first. But don't let me get to my closet. Don't let me get to my prayer closet. Don't let me start talking. Don't let me begin to remember about who Jesus is and what he's already done. And not just what he did for me, what he did for my wife and what he did for my children, what he did for my neighbor, what he did for my church family. Oh, you guys. That's that spiritual rest. He knows what you're going through. He cares. And if, and if he didn't, you already be out of here. You'd be overwhelmed. You'd be, you'd, you'd be throwing the towel. But see, when you have this, there's some hope in there. There's some hope. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his rights. And see, when you know that you know, that's the stuff that keeps you grounded. Your great high priest knows and cares. You, your family cares. Your your friends care, your parents care, but you got another level of care. Oh my God, there's nothing wrong with earthly care, but there's somebody in heaven. Can you picture that right now? Your great high priest is in heaven. God, I just heard from Miss Felisa. Miss Felisa says she's going to, you think he don't know your name? Oh, he's representing you. Oh Lord, have mercy. That's why he went back. So I send the Holy Spirit to keep you so I can go back and intercede. So you can bombard heaven with whatever you need to bombard heaven with 24 7. I thought it was something CVS was open 24 hours. I thought it was something Acme was open 24 hours. But then I said, wait a minute, heaven never closes. Because sometimes those places close. I went there early one morning, they were closed because the people ain't come to work. Oh! That never happened to me, with, to me when I called on heaven. Folk ain't come to work. God worked overtime in my life. I don't know what he's doing for you. But your great high priest, he knows he cares. As a matter of fact, verse 15 of Hebrews 4 said, we don't have a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but with all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. He can relate. He knows what we've been through. He knows what we're going through because he became us so we could become him. He had to become us so he could be, take on sins because God can't sin. So whatever you're going through, whatever you've been through, he's already been there, done that, and handled it. For who? For you and for me. Oh, I'm talking about spiritual rest. Spiritual rest. You need to rest your spirit because what affects your spirit affects your natural and what affects your natural affects your spirit. But see, if your spiritual person is going to be the dominant person in your life, then your spiritual person is going to have to tell your natural person, look, chill. Look, 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 natural person. Look, look. You try to get me all riled up. You try to get me all messed up. Because what you told me Monday ain't messed with me. Now you come some stuff on Tuesday. Your spiritual person, now, wait a minute now. Because heaven is still open. And the, your great high priest is still interceding. 2 Corinthians 5, 21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Wow, what a great high priest. That's awesome. Wow. Then point number three, your high priest is waiting to help you. Hebrews 4, 16. Let us therefore. Mm, that sounds like a, a climax, like a conclusion to the battle. If you know who Christ is, 
If you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you understand this thing about spiritual rest, and it does point to the eternal rest in the future, I will, I will admit that. It talks about the eternal rest in the future. This points to that, but he's talking about resting right now because if this is all about the future rest, then why would we come boldly to the throne of grace when we're already with him? Oh, come on, somebody. Get some clarity on that. Your great high priest is waiting to help you. It says he's right there, his high priest. He understands our weaknesses, for he faced all of the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. you find grace and mercy. Oh, grace and mercy. We'll get to what that means. But that's, that's, that's something when you think about it. You're at the throne of grace. With Jesus, your high priest. I like that he's your great high priest. I love that when you go somewhere, you don't have to prove who you are. You ever go somewhere? Your name? And then he said, you have your license? When you go to Jesus, you ain't got to go through all that. You go to your great high priest, he already knows who you are. He already knows about it. Hebrews 10, 19 says, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, verse 20, by a new and living way, which he had consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh, verse 21, and having a high priest over the house of God, 22, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. Don't waver in your faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, the water of the word. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. You got to believe the promise of God. Those that believe Jesus enter into this kind of rest. And somebody said, Pastor, I don't know if I can rest. I got so much going on in my life. I don't know if I could rest. Spiritual rest. Because stuff going to go on. It's how you respond to it. And God let me see that if you respond to it in your own power, you're going to be real tired. But he said, if you give it to him, if you let go and let God, if you just give it to him. See, that's where you got to trust him. You really got to trust him. You, you, you got, look, Jaquay, you don't leave your baby with just anybody. Oh, mommy, here's a daycare right here. It don't look that good. Look kind of dark on the inside. They ain't got no toys or nothing in there. Let's put the baby there. No, you just don't. God, you're great high priest. You don't leave your stuff just anywhere. You won't leave it with God. The Greek word for mercy is E-L-E-O-S, Elios, which means pity and compassion. And for grace, the Greek word most used is charis, C-H-A-R-I-S, which means favor. The Wilmington God to the Bible says mercy is the act of God withholding deserved punishment. Hello. 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 When you think you somebody because you've been saved all these years. Amen. And Jesus got a chair right next to him for you. Mercy is the act of God withholding deserved punishment, while grace is the act of God bestowing unmerited favor. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Because the word of God in Hebrews 4, 16 says that ye may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. So when do you need mercy and grace? When you're going through stuff. When you need to be spiritually rested. When you can't get the spiritual rest, you need grace and mercy. You need God's grace and God's mercy to be able to spiritually rest in what's going on in your life. God's grace and mercy. Mm. And mercy, God does not give us the punishment we deserve, namely hell. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! While in his grace, God gives us the gift we do not deserve, namely heaven. Oh, you go boldly to the throne. That's why you can go boldly through the blood of Jesus to the throne of grace. You belong there. You belong. See, Jesus, y'all, can, we connected with Christ. You belong. Your name belongs up in heaven. God's grace and mercy is evident all throughout the Bible. And so is the great high priest, Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, all throughout the Bible. Your spiritual rest is in Christ. 
and in him only. It's already to have folks praying with you and praying for you, but your spiritual rest is only in Christ. Amen. Amen. It's nothing. We're supposed to pray for enough. We're supposed to have intercessory prayer and everything. But but when it when it get real deep, God ought to know about it. And he doesn't mind knowing about it. And you ain't got to be all pretty with it. He don't care how you say it. As a matter of fact, when you can't pray, I understand the Holy Spirit will intercede for me. I wish I had a witness in here. When you can't get the words out and everything, God, look. Sometimes uh, did they say that Holy Spirit will do moanings and groanings that can't. You ever hear somebody sometimes they just they're going through so much they like, mm, mm. They just be, oh Lord. You say, what 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 the you remember, you remember in the old church it was well, we the mothers on the mother's bed. They just mm. uh-huh. Somebody coming looking crazy, the mother be like, mm. Uh-huh. Hey, Lord. <laughs> Come on. Preacher ain't talking about mm, bless them, Lord. That's it. Preacher taking too long. Ooh, Lord. Move him along. The deacons be up there, pull up their pants, white socks on. Bring it on in, Pastor. Bring it on in. Bring it on in, Pastor. Bring it on in. The rest of I go close. But you got to have spiritual rest. Spiritual rest. Your life in Christ is spiritual. You're in spiritual warfare. That's why we get tired. Because not only do you have burns of life, you got the enemy pressing in, trying to make this thing bigger than what it really is, trying to make you think that God can't and that God won't, that God does not hear your prayer. But when you spiritually rest, you know he hears your prayer. You know he's able. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, hallelujah. See, that's what that spiritual rest is. The stuff is going on, but you say, look, I, I'm insulated. Yeah. <laughs> Can't touch this. I got on the whole arm of God, having done all to stand. Yeah. Oh, learn to cry out to God. Ain't nothing, you don't get no trophy for just trying to do it all by yourself. I ain't want to bother God because I knew, I knew my mom was calling on him for something. So uh, I ain't want to make it. He's got the whole world in his hand. Oh, in the midst of your spiritual life, somebody told somebody it's going to be easy. No, in this life, you're going to have some challenges. But be a good chair. I've overcome. See, there's a thing called victory. And I understand you really don't get victory if ain't nothing going on. Why would you spiritually rest if you ain't working? You rest from labor. So if you ain't doing nothing, you've been resting all. I worked at a place, don't say nothing, Vicky. I worked at a place where some folks, they stayed on break all day. And then they talking about I'm working. They on break all day. As a matter of fact, I wanted to start smoking. I'm, I can see if you had a bad bladder, but every five minutes, I can see you going to the bathroom. Said, I'm going to start smoking. Some people do that. They get so petty with stuff. You mess your life up trying to get what they got. But I couldn't believe it. I just really couldn't believe it. And nobody says anything. Where are you going? Smoke break. What you just come back from? Smoke break. I think you got a problem. <laughs> yeah, pass it right to the desk. But through your faith in Jesus Christ, you can boldly go to the throne of grace. See, you don't have to be ashamed. Anybody ever mess up and made a mistake, said something, should have been somewhere, done something you shouldn't have done, but through the blood of Holy Communion is about your forgiveness. And see, Proverbs talks about you don't want to keep on doing the same thing over and over. There's something wrong with you. Then you need to go see another kind of doctor. You know, because if you think you're going to change doing the same thing, that's, that's madness. But when you make a mistake, when you truly repent, when you truly want forgiveness, Jesus is right there. And see, if you believe, if you're saved, you have that available to you. Some, some people are so hard on themselves. You ever see people, they always beating themselves up? 
I didn't do this right. I did. That's why my life is all screwed up, because I didn't. No, your life is screwed up because you ain't trust Jesus. I come to let you know, if you let Jesus get a hold of your life, you're going to be all right. Now, he's going to do some twists and turns you might not like. That's the other thing you have to do. When you trust God, you got to let him do it his way. It's his way. It is his way. And it's his time. He's going to do what he needs to do because he knows what to do because he's Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He knows all about you. He made in his own image. He knows exactly what you need. God, what are you doing? What are you taking me down this street when I want to go to that street? He said, because on this street is where you're safe. On that street right now, you won't be safe. And sometimes we can't see it until after yeah. it happens. But that's him interceding. That's his spiritual rest resting in him. I'm so glad we got a great high priest. I get my spiritual rest with my grace and mercy. You need grace and mercy so you can spiritually rest. Come boldly to the throne of grace. You go some places, people make you think, yeah, if you can't quote all 66 books of the Bible, then you ought not come boldly to the throne of grace. Don't let people trip you out. If God saved you where you are, then who gonna change the rules? Yeah, we supposed to grow up in Christ. Yeah, we supposed to know more about him. But don't let people you know, put all these unnecessary rules and stuff on you. You got to do this, you got to do that. Look, if you just call out his name, he will answer. You come boldly to the throne of grace where you can find grace and mercy anytime you need it. Anytime you need it, ain't that something? Anytime you need it. When your prayer partner's asleep, you send them a text. They don't answer you. Or they say, I'm sleeping. Hello. Y'all sleep? You are able to go to the throne of grace for yourself. Did you know that? You can, it's nothing wrong. I love incessant prayer, prayer partners and everything. But every now and then, sometimes things happen in a minute. See, it takes 911 a little time to get to your house. What you be doing in the meantime? Especially if you were you with somebody, they they losing it, they running around. What's the number 911, Doug? <laughs> what's, the, what's the number to 911? You better be brave. But I want to leave you with this. Matthew 11, 27 to 30. All things are delivered unto me of my Father. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. And he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come unto me. All you that are going through something that you thought you'd never go through, thought you can't get through, come unto me. And I will give you the spiritual rest that you need with the mercy and the grace so you can get through this situation. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. See, when you yoke two oxen together, they, they're supposed to walk together. If you're going to yoke up with Jesus, I tell you, he's going to carry the burden. He said, learn of me, I'm meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. Some folk are tired and don't know it's their souls that's tired. You're not physically tired. It shows up physically, but your soul is tired. You've been spiritually warfare and everything, but when you give that thing to God and trust God with it, and trust God for it, that's what you call spiritual rest. God, I, I tried it my way, and it did not work. Jesus said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Be careful, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, ah, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That's what you call spiritual rest. Oh, my God. In the midst of what you're going through. You got a peace of God. Shalom. Shalom. The people look at you like you're crazy. But that peace of God. Passive. 
all understanding. Spiritual rest is available to all. Spiritual rest is available to the whomsoever believeth. But you got to belong to Jesus Christ. You know, when you go on vacation, you might stay at a hotel. And if you are a member of that hotel, you get rewards and stuff, stuff like that. But if you know Jesus, you ain't got to have your reward card out. Mm. Some people can't stay certain places because they're not members. Lord have mercy. They get turned away. They don't have the proper card. Or the, they, 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 they don't have the proper credentials. But I thank God for Jesus. God, he don't turn anybody down. You say yes to his will and yes to his way. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I was so glad when I became a whosoever. You know, you can come up in places where you might think your name is the most important thing, but when you come to Jesus, you be a whosoever. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And when you talk about spiritual rest, don't forget John 10. That's the abundant life you're talking about. That you might have life and have it more abundantly. It's not about the money and the cars and the houses, the dresses, right. the clothes and all that. It's about peace. There's many people that I've come in contact with. They got everything they need, but they are not peaceful. They don't have no joy. Money can't buy peace. Money can't buy joy. And the Beatles says money can't buy me love. For God said, not a son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Therefore, that person has no spiritual rest. They have no spiritual relationship nor connection. And this is a condemnation that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. But if you want that great high priest to be your Lord and Savior and to be your intercessor, you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Get some spiritual rest. Think about that, spiritual rest. That's that peace. You're right there, you're going through stuff, but you got some spiritual rest. People ask you, how, how do you do it? God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Because there's some stuff that happens in your life that you don't have nothing to do with. It just came like Job. Job wasn't messing with nobody. I, I read it over. Job wasn't messing with nobody. He wasn't talking about his neighbors. Seemed like he was minding business. Anybody been mind your business, something come up. But if it had not been for the Lord, the only reason why you don't go crazy is because of God. God, you got this like you got everything else in my life. God, ever since I can remember, you've been good to me. And some of us have been through some deep, deep stuff, but you're still standing. You're still here. That's what that spiritual rest is. When, when you know where your help comes from. When you know where your blessing, where your power comes from. When you know where your healing comes from. Your deliverance. That's why some folk don't worry no more. Because God let them know everything going to be all right. The word of God says, when you worry, you can't even make your body grow another inch. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto thee. I'm sorry, y'all. He's not just a Sunday God. He's just not the God that you call on when you're in trouble. He's an everyday, 24 hour, seven day a week God. And through his love, don't mind interceding for you and I. No matter how often you go. You can go to <coughs> excuse me. You can go to God's throne of grace anytime you want. Did you know that? As many times as you want. Don't be embarrassed. Pass out with them 15 times yesterday. Well, go 20. 
because the fact that you're complaining about 15, you don't know who he is. Go as many times as you need to go and believe him and wait on him and be of good courage and he will strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Because when the enemy comes like a flood, God will raise up a standard. I know there are some emergency situations and sometimes it seems like, God, you got to move and he will move. He will move you or he'll move it or move them. Oh, what a great high priest. We come at this point in our service where we want to make sure that each and every person here and online has an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the only begotten son of God, the savior of the world, their great high priest. So that when you say yes to him, you have the ability to go through whatever it is he wants you to go through, but you can spiritually rest and still get the victory. So if Jesus Christ is not your Lord and Savior, take a moment to consider why not? Why is he not your Lord and Savior? And if he's not your Lord and Savior, who are you going to get? Who you going to get? Or if you, you, well, you saved and you pulled away, why do you remain away? How has it been since you pulled away? Oh, please tell yourself the truth. Yeah, you're looking good. You're riding good. You're eating good. But you don't have no peace. You don't have no joy because you're disconnected from your Savior. I'm talking about real joy, real peace, real love, real mercy, real grace. I ain't talking about made up stuff where you go buy stuff to make yourself feel good. I'm talking about feeling good for real, for real. And suppose you're looking for that church home. That church family. You know you need to be in fellowship. But no place you've been yet suits you. What I want you to do is change your suit. You got on the wrong suit. Get, get out of the flesh. Get in the spirit and let God speak to you. Lord have mercy. I was the same way looking for a church. You look all around like, I don't like the windows. I, what they got to do with your salvation? I don't like the ceiling. I, I don't like the way they got the choir law behind the preacher. Woo, we go through some stuff. And the Spirit is saying, what does that have to do with me? I came that you might have life and have it more blessed. I come to bless you. I come to be your Lord and Savior. And realize this. Your temple is where I really hang out anyhow. So whether you're in a little church, small church, big, your temple is where I hang out. That's why I really meet you. But you need to be in fellowship. Forsake not the assembly of ourselves together. So, okay. I'm done. I'm going to extend to you an invitation to accept Christ, to dedicate your life to Christ, or find your church home. This may not be your church home, but at least put it on the radar, put it on your agenda. Because you know how it is. Once you leave here today, you're going to forget about it because so much stuff is going on. That's a very important part of your life because you are connected to so many other people, not only your family, but friends, people on the job. They want to know, you know, where you go to church, what you do. See, they're going to see the anointing in your life. They're going to see God's peace and God's joy in your life. And you need to be able to answer them, well, well see, I don't really go to church because you're in church, you know, nerd, you know. No. Do what the Bible says. Be in fellowship with the saints. I'm sorry you came to a place where we were perfect. But when you find that you're not perfect, let us know. We're going to come pray with you. We're going to bring you some water, some juice. I know you're going to be sick when you find out you're not perfect. You're going to be messed up. You're going to be so messed up. I'm going to do the prayer of salvation. You can repeat after me and do your own prayer. Father God, I believe you sent Jesus to die on the cross for my sin. He was buried in a borrowed tomb, but got up for me. On Resurrection Sunday, with all power, my new life, my eternal life, 
my rededicated life, my new church family, my spiritual rest in his hands. Therefore, I come right now to accept everything that Jesus has for me. Thank you, Lord, for blessing me. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. If you said that you're here with us, if you want to accept Christ, rededicate your life to Christ, join this church family, come down front. If you're online with us, you're chatting, then we ask that you type in a J for joining, ask for salvation, or for rededication, or give us a call at 215-472-9551. Or you can email us at philip, P-H-I-L-A, prayer at gmail.com. Let us know what God did in your life, what God is doing for your life. But as soon as you can, be in the place that God needs you to be in. Put that first on your agenda. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Then say only, say first. Because once you seek him first, he'll give you direction for the other stuff, okay? But seek him first. And God will take care of everything else. Praise God, each and one of you. We love you. Thank God for you. We're going to move on in our service. We're going to worship God through our giving. Even during the, during the giving, anybody, you know, saved, will get saved, you dedicate your life, you can still interrupt the service. That's important. That's what it's all about. Souls being saved or reconnected with Christ. Hallelujah. You can prepare now for the ministry of giving. If you need an envelope, just raise your hand. Our officers will make sure you have an envelope. If you need one, <laughs> praise God. Amen. Praise God. Father, we love you. Thank you for taking care of us. We're coming right now, God, to worship you through our giving, to take care of your church, to take care of ministry, God. Thank you for what you do for us. We honor you for that. So we come right now as a cheerful giver, as a loving giver, to build your kingdom here on earth. God, receive us and receive our gifts. Then multiply the gifts for the building of your kingdom that people might know who you are and that those on the journey will be encouraged that we be ministered to to go out and tell others that Jesus saves. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do in Jesus' name. God bless you as you honor God through your giving. Get on your feet and clap your hands.
Thank you for honoring God and giving all things come of thee, O Lord, of our own have we given thee. Amen. May God entrust us. <laughs> wow. For gifts, with the building of his kingdom. It's major when you think about it. He, he trusts us to do that for his glory. Also join us online is Dorothy Dye, Yolanda Stevens, Randolph Carpenter Sr., Gina Lorraine, Dorothy Jones. Carol, Strand, and Lena. Thank God for the sister the sister fellowship on yesterday. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank God for that. This afternoon, the uh, ministry team Mercy is at Kirk Bride, and the Reverend Shana Mc McGreen shall be doing the message over there. And we're going to pray for her because she's coming right now to do the altar prayer. <laughs> God is good like that. Amen. So if you have anything that you're in need of, you can come down front. You can stay where you are. You can stand. But turn it over to the Lord. This, that spiritual rest. She's going she's gonna to take us boldly to the throne of grace. Amen. I know you can go for yourself, but we come in as a church family. Amen. So whatever it is you stand in need of, whatever you need God to do in your life, believe God for it. Amen. Please believe God for it. God is so good. He is so worthy of all the praise. We serve a mighty Mighty, mighty, good God. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody still waiting for God to do something for him? Keep on waiting because he's about to do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Anybody need rest? Amen. No <laughs> rest, spiritual rest. Anybody need rest? Oh my God. Oh, let me the pastor said that we needed to take rest. <laughs> but did anybody hear that and say, listen, I can't take no rest? Come on right? Because we have learned that if you want something done, yeah, you got yeah, to do it on. by yourself. Anybody realize that? If I want something done, I got to do it myself. You feel that way come on come on let us pray you can pray from your seat you can stand up you can come on down anybody feel like if i i got to i got to get it done i got to tell you i gotta do this thing because if i don't do it it won't get done anybody feeling overwhelmed it's all on your back if the family's going to get it together you're going to have to get it together right you're the one who's going to have to do it mm-hmm if anybody's gonna have to get have peace, you got to stand up and you got to give the family peace. You gotta be the one. If we wanna get together financially, I got to get up and I got to work. And work and work and work and work. Cause I gotta make it happen. Anybody feel like that? 
I'm going to have to find me another job. I'm, I'm going to have to pray more. I'm going to have to do it in my strength, in my might, right? In my strength, in my might, with my intelligence, with my connections, I got to get it done. Anybody feel that way? Hallelujah, God. But we come to you, God. Hallelujah. I come to you, God, on behalf of all of the people who feels like I got to get it done. My God, help us, God. There is no rest. Only rich people rest. But for me, I got to work. I got to get this done. We thank you, God, for your word. Hallelujah. That tells us all those who are feeling heavy, all those who are laboring, laboring and working. He says, come to me. He said, and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. I will give you rest. If you have faith to let it go, if you have faith to let it go and put it in my hands, the word said it's not going to be by your might. It's not going to be by the strength that you have. You've been strong all your life. It won't be by that. It won't be by your power. I know that you've made the connections. I know that you have the resume. It won't be by that. But if you were handed over to me, it would be by my spirit. Saith the Lord, hallelujah, not by might nor by power, but by the spirit of the living God. Handed over. God says, I heard your request. I heard your prayer. Stop trying to will it into existence. God told me to let it go. Oh, Lord, my God. When I was praying for someone, I was praying for my cousin to to be healed. God said, what are you doing right now? I was sitting in church. He said, you see that feeling in your stomach? It's like really tight. He said, you're trying to will it. Are you trying to do it? You're You're trying to will him to be healed. God said, I heard your prayer. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Let it go. You can't do it. And you can think on it and you can have a tight stomach all day long and and, and do it all day long, but you're not going to move me. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus that your people will let it go. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. That we will put our faith in you and know, God, that not only are you able to do it, but that you are willing to do it. I pray, God, that we will put our hands up and say, you got it now, God. It is in your hands. And I pray, God, that we will take the rest that you have given us. God says, do you know how long I've been trying to give you this rest? I've been trying to give it to you and give it to you, but you wouldn't take it. So I pray in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, God, that your people will make it up in their minds right now that we're going to take the rest and we're going to believe you. Your word says that you've overcome this world and everything that's going on in our lives are things of this world. And your word says you've overcome this world You've overcome the financial situations. You've overcome sickness. You've overcome death. You've overcome relationship situations. There is nothing in this world that you haven't overcome. So right now, God, we come to take your wreck. Right now, we come leaning not on our own understanding. But in all our ways, we're going to acknowledge you, God. That your word says, I've been young and I've been old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Or his seed begging for bread. 
that we're going to rest in whatever it is that you're going to do, God, that we trust that you have our best interests at heart. I'm reminded of David. He was praying and praying and praying for his son. He was praying for his son to be healed. He wouldn't eat. He was laid out on the ground. He wouldn't drink. Anybody feel that way over a, a situation? Just, just destroying everything. You feel like this is the thing. And God said no. And God did not heal his son. But then he got up. He washed up. He ate and he drank. Because he was saying, God, I trust you. God, you did it how you did it. You're going to do it how you're going to do it. And even if you say no, I'm going to trust you, God. Because you're still good and you're still God. God, and even if the thing doesn't turn out the way I want it to, I trust you, God. Hallelujah. I'm going to take rest. Because most of our rest comes from what if it don't turn out the way I want it to turn out? And I'm here to say, what if it doesn't? What if it doesn't turn out the way you want? God is still good and God is still God. Hallelujah. And so we're going to take rest, God, and completely trust you. Even in your no. Hallelujah. Even in your no. We know, God, that you know what's going on and that you have a bigger plan. And we're going to trust you. We're going to say, not my will, God, but your will be done. It wasn't until Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done, Father. He was crying and sweating blood because he wanted this cup to pass. But then he said, not my will, your will be done. God, what road do you have us to travel? Whatever it is, we know that you will never leave us, nor will you forsake us. I pray, Father God, that you would strengthen us right now in the name of Jesus to do what you have us to do, to walk the road you have us to walk, to drink the cup you have for us to drink. And God, we're going to trust you. Hallelujah. And we're going to take rest because you are God. And you know, you are all knowing, you are all seeing, you are all powerful. And so we trust you. Help us, God, to have enough faith to walk away from the situation we've been fixated on. Give us enough faith to walk away from the situation we have been fixated on and come into your presence and come into your rest. We thank you, God, no matter how you decide to do it. We believe you. God, we know that you've heard the request. You've heard our request and you got it. And we're not going to stay tight in our bellies trying to will it anymore. But we're handing it over to you. And we thank you in advance for what you're going to do. We thank you in advance for how you're going to use it for your glory. We thank you in advance. God, for the power that's going to come through whatever the situation is, for the lives that are going to be saved, for the anointing, not your will, not my will, God, but your will be done. So we trust you, God. Thank you, God, for what you're doing. Now the Lord of peace himself, now the Lord of peace himself, give you peace. Always, all me, by all means, the Lord be with you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. and amen. Hallelujah. Everybody. Say amen. Yeah.